Well, Joel Rayburn is the founder and director of the American Center for Levant Studies. Good evening to you. Good evening. We're also joined by Omar al muqdad Syrian journalist and filmmaker. Thanks for being with us, Omar. Well, thanks for having me. Joel, I'll start with you if I can, because you have written that it would be a mistake for Arab leaders to embrace Assad. Uh, are they not just accepting the reality that he is not going anywhere? No, I don't think so. Actually, the realistic position is to look at what's actually happening on the ground in Syria, where Assad's economy and his state are in absolute meltdown, economic collapse. The state really can't function anymore. Uh, and he's on very brittle ground, even within his own constituency. I think there are communities that just a couple of years ago, we would have considered staunch loyalists of Assad who are disaffected now. So it, it's it's it, the unrealistic position is to assume that he's going to be there for the long term. Omar, what do you make of that? Uh, is it right for the Arab world to embrace Assad? Is it just a case of real politique? Well, no, in fact, it's just a, a reckless uh, behavior that we are witnessing now from some of these countries. Unfortunately, we're talking here about war criminal a guy who committed crimes against the humanity in Syria, and he's in direct confrontation right now with half of his nation. So is it just um, <clears throat> uh, the, the, these uh, leaders are adopting a temporary solution by saying, well, look, Assad is here, let's just deal with him. It is not that easy as uh, many of these people uh, think. This guy now, almost 35 percent of of the Syrian territories, he, he can't even control or, or send the troops there. Uh, due to the um, uh, international community distribution over these uh, areas, like in the northeast Syria, you have the uh, Idlib province, the Kurdish uh, issue, like millions of refugees all over the world. Mm -hmm. This is not going to happen at this point for these leaders just to start dealing with Bashar Assad as just um, a normal president after okay. all the killing and the brutality he conducted in Syria over the last 10 years. And Omar, um, part, uh, part of the areas of Syria uh, not under uh, Assad's control uh, are under the control of, of Turkey. And President Erdogan has also made it clear that he wants to re-establish ties with Damascus. Let's take a quick listen to him talking about that. Russia, Turkey... As Russia, Turkey and Syria, our intelligence officials and defense ministers met in Moscow and we started a process there. Now, hopefully we will bring the three foreign ministers together, then according to the developments, we will meet as leaders. Uh, so Joel, uh, what does President Erdogan gain from closer ties with Assad? I think first of all, this is electioneering, it's election posturing, Erdogan has uh, some very important elections coming up. His opposition is quite strong. And the issue of Syrian refugees has become, unfortunately, a domestic political issue inside Turkey that works against President Erdogan. I think, secondly, he's trying to maneuver some, uh, may, uh, create some pressure on the United States to try to change our relationship with the Syrian Democratic Forces, which Erdogan has declared a, a terrorist offshoot of, of the PKK. But I think it, uh, beyond that, uh, Turkey's objectives, its aims, its interests in Syria are actually incompatible with those of Assad. So I don't see this going anywhere. I see it headed into the same kind of dead-end cul-de-sac that the UAE outreach and the Jordanian outreach to Assad have already gone into. And Omar, uh, to what extent is uh, this link to Erdogan's plan to send back the millions of Syrian refugees that are right now sheltering in Turkey? Well, that's not realistic because a lot of people has already expressed their views on this one. They are freaking out. This guy you can't trust. He's been killing them, chasing them around for the last 10 years. So to just simply throw them back into the guy who's already caused this uh, for them, it, it seems to me is a scenario of terror for, for millions of these guys. Folks. But uh, let's remember the hallmark of uh, Turkey's foreign policy towards Syria is uh, for over the last five years was to eliminate the uh, Kurdish presence alongside their border. So that's why they've been trying so hard um, uh, to eliminate uh, uh, their presence over their border. They tried with the military campaign, but the United States said no. Everybody said no. So now they're trying nonetheless to uh, to, to play the uh, the Syrian regime card, saying like to in order for them to undermine any 
Kurdish entity, the legality of any Kurdish entity that might be established in the future um, along the side, uh, alongside the, Syri the Syrian Turkish border. So by saying, okay, we're going to bring the, the, the central government there. But guess what? This is not realistic simply because the United States forces are there, not going anywhere. And the United States has made it clear. There is no uh, Assad regime in the area allowed. So for Turkey, it is actually seems to me vague um, what they are going to establish by this um, mm -hmm. move, maybe just for uh, domestic uh, uh, use in front of the uh, Turkish opposition. You know, they've been... Um, uh, They've been gaining a ground in Turkey, saying we, they, we're going to restore relationship with Bashar Assad. So I think um, Erdogan is trying to use that just as a political card for okay. election season. No, okay. no more than that. And just briefly, Joel, from you, um, has the U.S. just completely dropped the ball on Syria? I think the administration has not been energetic enough over the last two years in uh, in enforcing sanctions and continuing the international uh, pressure coalition against Assad. But it's still there. The policy is still there. And I think actually now you're seeing Congress, the House of Representatives changing hands. The House Republican leadership has been quite staunchly anti-Assad. They just pushed through even in the last Congress uh, a, a, a captagon bill that could create some significant new pressure against Assad. So I think it's it's the wrong time for outside countries to believe that the United States is going to let them get away with establishing trade relations, commercial relations, and so on, in violation of U.S. sanctions, as the Emirati foreign minister seemed to indicate yesterday. All right, Joel, Joel Rayburn and Omar al-Muqdad, thank you very much indeed to you both.